Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about crushing the spirit of intimidation, crushing the spirit of intimidation. You know, a lot of times we don't think about intimidation, you know, as something that we can, that can actually keep us from walking out our purpose. But I've seen so many people even in their business or the Lord will give them like a business idea or an idea for a ministry or a nonprofit and the idea is so big that they are intimidated by the idea itself. And because of that intimidation, they don't move on it, right? They don't take the first step um, to actually do anything because they feel like it's so big, you know, that they have to save up for all these years to do it. And God does not work like that. Whenever he gives us something, the resources are there. It's just a matter of having him show you exactly where to go to get the resources and understand that if God gave you a vision, then he already has the provision for that vision. Okay. He doesn't give you a vision without the provision already being in place. God never does that. So if you're in a situation where God has given you a vision and you don't see the provision, there's something spiritual going on. It is either been stolen or you've missed some instruction that God has given you. Okay, let's look at Numbers 13.33. Um, it says, There also we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Okay, so notice this text is talking about the Nephilim. Okay, so the Nephilim were like very, very big. Remember like David and Goliath. Goliath was very big. So that would be one of the most classic stories of when we see, when we think about intimidation in the Bible, Goliath was so big that the whole army was afraid to fight him, okay, until David came on the scene. And because David didn't see himself as a grasshopper, he was able to win. One of the key things in this text here is we see that it says that because they were like grasshoppers in their own sight, the Nephilim saw them as grasshoppers. So that's the key thing here. However you see yourself is how you're going to be perceived, okay? So if you see yourself as a grasshopper or you see yourself as being too small to accomplish something, um, then it's always going to be unattainable for you because that's how you see yourself, okay? So it's important to make sure that we are seeing ourselves the way that God sees us, okay? He sees us as more than conquerors. He's never gonna put more on us than we can bear. So if God gives you an idea, that should automatically be an indication to you that it's something that you can handle. It has to be something that you can handle. He's not gonna give it to you if it wasn't something that he thought that he could trust you with, right? So if God gives you a vision, no matter how big it seems, Never, ever, ever allow yourself to see yourself as a grasshopper in the eyes of that vision. Because if you do that, then it will always kind of be like one step ahead of you or be attainable where you'll be like trying to get to it, but then it'll never happen. Um, you have to be able to say to yourself that I am well able to do this. Because again, you're not doing it alone, but God is actually doing it with you. And he's never going to give you something that he knows um, that you're not able to do. Now, if he gives you something that he knows that you're not able to do by yourself, it's because he wants to do it with you. Um, again, he is a father, okay? So if he, if he wants to have father-daughter day or father-son day with you, he's not gonna give you stuff that you can do by yourself, right? He's gonna give you a two-player game or something that you both have to do together. And that's the whole point of it. Okay, so one of the first ways to be able to get rid of the spirit of intimidation is your insight. Okay, not insight, but how you see yourself on the inside of you. Your insight. Okay, how do you see yourself from the inside of you? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a grasshopper and this thing is too big to accomplish? What is your insight? How are you seeing yourself from the inside? And if you're not seeing yourself in the manner where you, you should be seeing yourself, then a way to change that would be to get into the word of God, right? Because how does a man renew his mind? You, you, your, your mind is going to be renewed and transformed by reading the word. 
All right. So if you're in a place right now where God has given you something, but it seems like it's too big for you or it seems like you don't have the finances to do it. You're in the best position that you could ever be in because you are in exactly where God wants you to be, because now he wants to give you instructions so you can operate in the supernatural and actually partner with him to do it. But if you're in a place where you are seeing yourself so small that you're not accomplishing anything, then you want to start first with, with getting into the word of God so you can work on your insight the way that you see yourself and begin to read the scriptures where it tells you about how God sees you. And the more and more you read that scripture, it'll begin to transform your mind. So you'll be able to see yourself and your insight will change because when your insight changes, then the way people see you on the outside will change. And same thing in this text, because they saw themselves as grasshoppers, they were seen as grasshoppers. So when you see yourself as more than a conqueror, then you will become more than a conqueror. One of the most powerful texts in the scriptures um, that talk about you know, people who see themselves so small, I would say is Ecclesiastes 12, 5, where it says, furthermore, men are afraid of a high place and of terrors on the road. The almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags himself along <laughs> and the caterberry is ineffective. This is so powerful, guys. For man goes to his eternal home while mourners go about in the street. Okay, what is this text talking about? The first part of this text is so, so, so key. We see this, I see this every day, dealing with people, um, and dealing with people who are in business or aspiring entrepreneurs, um, where it says, men are afraid of high places. Afraid of high places, okay? So one of the biggest fears is people feeling like they're not good enough for something, right? They're too afraid that, oh, this is too high of a thing for me to do. But understand there is nothing that's too high for you to do because your father, your heavenly father owns everything in the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay, so nothing that you do is a big deal to God. Understand that. I don't care if you're opening up your own airline or your own cruise line or your own TV station or your own TV network or whatever that you assume is big. All of these things are small to God. OK, but it says men are afraid of high places. So a lot of times the enemy will try to convince you to be afraid and to think that you're not good enough for a certain place that God is trying to take you into. But we're already seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So why would you be afraid of a high place? Right. If your father owns everything um, and he and we are the kings of the earth, then we are meant to be in high places. OK, if we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness and all of these things that are in high places, we need to go there and tear them down. OK, guys, <laughs> so we need to be able to ascend to these places. I um, mean, you know, who will ascend even the Mount of the Lord? We have to be able to go to these places to be able to tear down, uproot all the things that the devil has planted and bring in the kingdom of God everywhere we go, build and plant the kingdom. And then it also says um, men are also afraid of the terrors on the road. One of the biggest things I hear from people is when it comes to like, oh, why don't you start this business? Well, what if it doesn't work out? You don't even know what's on the road yet, <laughs> right? You're already afraid of the terrors that might be on the road, even though you're not even on that road yet. Well, what, what happens if it doesn't work out? Or what if I invest this money and then know it just, the business doesn't work out? Okay, but what if it does work out? OK, <laughs> what if it does work out? Understand, guys, it only takes one successful business for you to be set for life. OK, just one. We'll have to get it right one time. OK, so I don't care if you fail 50 times. It doesn't matter. You just got to get it right once and you set for life. Why would you give up? You know, I've seen so many people be like, well, I tried that one time and it didn't work and I gave up. And I'm like, you do know you only have to get it right once. Right. <laughs> I don't care if it takes 20 tries to do it. You need to do 20 tries, right? When we look at even Formula 401, the reason why it's Formula 401 is because they got the formula wrong 400 times, right? So it's, it's stuff like that that we don't think about. All you have to do is get it right one time. It's kind of like if I gave you a padlock and I said, you know what? When you get this padlock open, 
you'll be a millionaire or you'll be set for life, right? Are you going to try one time and put it down and be like, I'm done with this? Or are you going to figure out any way you can to get that padlock open no matter how many tries you have to go through, right? When people really understand it from that perspective and understand that you only have to get it right one time to be set for life. So why give up after the first time or the second time or the third time or the 50th time? You only have to get it right once. I think one of the most powerful things is to not be a quitter. Okay, if something knocks you back or it doesn't work that time, get up and try again. You eventually look, even even if you just look at like statistically speaking, if you try it enough times, you're bound to get it right. Okay, I'm just saying, (laughs) even if you didn't have God on your side, right, just 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 trying it enough times. You're going to get it right, right? Even a broken clock is right twice a day. (laughs) Okay, it's the same thing. You cannot give up and you cannot be afraid of the terrors that are on the road. Okay, it says they're afraid of the terrors on the road. So people are afraid to even go on the road of entrepreneurship because they're afraid. But what if it doesn't work? I've heard all these terrible stories of people who tried this and got robbed or did this. Yeah, all of the terrors on the road. There might be terrors on the road, but it doesn't stop that negate the fact that if you stay on the road and if you continue to go with God, you are going to get it right. And it only takes one time getting it right to be set for life. Okay. Because every single one of us, God has given you something. He has placed something on the inside of you that was designed to make you wealthy. I don't care if it's your cooking. I don't care if it's the the way that you, you have an eye for things. You're great with the designing and putting things together. It could be even be great at talking. (laughs) Okay. Like it could be anything that you can take that experience and turn it into Income, there's always something in some seed that God has placed on the inside of you for you to be able to receive everything that's already in the covenant for you. Because we were all designed to be wealthy because God is wealthy and he's already left us a covenant that says that we are, okay? Jesus became poor that you might be rich, okay? So that's one of the benefits of one of the things that Jesus did for you. He didn't die just for you to only have salvation and be broken poor until you get back to heaven. He didn't, he was, he was literally, he literally died for you to be wealthy. Okay. So don't let that go into vain. Don't let that go in vain. Don't let what don't, I don't ever want to get to heaven and be like, oh, you left half of what Jesus died for you to have on the table. No, that's an insult to Jesus because it's just like, I did all this for you and you only took half of it. I did all this for you and you only took 20% of it. I died for you to be in perfect health. I died for you to have wealth. I died for you to live in peace. I died for you to to have everything that you need. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Everything pertaining to life and godliness. He's already died for us to have. Why would we leave half of it on the table? So we cannot be afraid of the terrors on the road. Understand there's terrors on the road regardless of whether you're broke or you're rich. (laughs) So you might as well keep going, (laughs) right? Don't give up. Um, Even people who are afraid of what people will say about them. That's another terror on the road that people think about. Well, what if it fails and then people start talking about me, right? What are people going to say? What are my friends going to say? What are my family going to say if it doesn't work out? Okay? People are going to talk whether you're broke or rich. (laughs) So you might as well (laughs) be good. And leave an inheritance to your children and your children's children. Okay? You might as well because people are going to talk anyway. So give them something to talk about by staying on the road and never giving up. Now, another part in this text too, and it talks about the grasshopper dragging himself along and the Cadbury being ineffective. When you're operating in fear, whether you're afraid of the high place or just kind of um, you have that... Um, what I don't know what that new thing people are talking about, where it's kind of like they have this syndrome where they don't feel like they belong in a certain place, right? If you're afraid of that, or if you, even if you're afraid of the terrors on the road, it causes you to be ineffective. Okay, you cannot be in fear and do well at the same time. You cannot. Okay, you can try to, and it will work for a little bit for like, but for long term, you're gonna have to overcome that fear so that you can continue to go. 
Because if you don't overcome that fear, it'll keep coming up and coming up and coming up. And eventually, it's going to stop you at some point. All right? So this is a very, very powerful text. Guys, go back and, and meditate on this text. I'm sure the Holy Spirit will give you even more revelation on it. Um, but do not be afraid of the terrors in the road. Don't be afraid of the high places. You belong in the high places because you're already seated in heavenly places. All right? So understand that and don't allow the terrors of the road to be to cause you to be afraid. Don't allow what you think people are going to say about you to cause you to be afraid because they're going to talk anyway. So give them something to talk about. Do something with God and do great exploits with the Father. Let them talk about that. Once you've gotten rid of that fear of, you know, the high places and the fear of the terrors that are on the road and what people are going to say, and even the fear of the intimidation of the thing being too big for you to accomplish, it's another thing that I've seen, too, dealing with entrepreneurs and people who are trying to do great exploits, right? Another thing that I've seen is that people think it's going to be easy, okay? Guys, just because God has given you something still doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, okay? There's still going to be things that come up in the road that you need to fortify yourself for. Nothing in this earth is easy, even when God is with you, okay? Do you guys remember when Pharaoh, when Moses went to Pharaoh to tell the people, uh, to tell, tell Pharaoh to let the people go, finally Pharaoh let the people go, right? And they're running away from Pharaoh and the army. And now they're stuck at the Red Sea. And now they start regretting, like, oh, man, we shouldn't have listened to you, Moses. You know, you done brought us to the sea over here. They're going to kill us. And we have we won't have nowhere to go. It was just a setup for the supernatural. Okay? But understand that just because God is leading you doesn't mean that there's not going to be obstacles. And some of the obstacles are there so that you can go through some stuff with him. So you can see him move supernaturally in your life. So you can be able to mark the, that that place and say, you know, God showed up so greatly for me in this place. I'm never going to forget it. And this is going to be a place where I can show even my children and my children's children and show them how much God moved for me. OK, so that's why the obstacles come. It's just to give you another place in an encounter with God that is undeniable. OK, but understand that there are going to be obstacles in anything you do. OK, just because God gave it to you does not mean it's going to be easy. All right, let's look at Psalms. Psalm 1829, it says, for by thee, I have run through a troop and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. And then Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And not only that, but God has also given you power to get wealth. I think that scripture is so key because if it was just going to be some uh, cakewalk and it was going to be easy to do, he wouldn't need to give you power to do it, okay? <laughs> if he says, I've given you power to get wealth, then understand that even if the wealth is coming from him, it does not mean that it's going to be easy. You're going to need to use that power. He's not going to give you power to do something if you don't need it, okay? So, but look here, it says that you are able to, by God, you will, you will be able to run through any troop that comes against you. By God, you will be able to leap over any wall or obstacle that comes your way. Remember, anything that we get in, the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Okay? He didn't, doesn't say he delivers you out of 10% of them, or he delivers you out of 20% of them, or he delivers you out of 50% of them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is going to deliver us out of them all. So understand, even if the thing looks big and you decide to take it on and you go on this journey with God, it does not mean that things are not going to pop up. They are going to pop up. But what you're going to need to do is understand that by God, you can run through any troop. By God, you can leap over any wall and any obstacle because he is always going to give you a way of escape. If you don't know where to turn, you can ask the Holy Spirit. He's the one that leads us and guides us into all truth. There is always a way of escape. I don't care what obstacle comes your way, you can leap over that wall. I don't care what um, demonic attacks come your way, you can run through that troop. Okay, I don't care what witchcraft comes your way, you have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means harm you because you will be able to tread upon all of the power of the enemy. All of it. That includes in your business, in your relationships, in your finances, 
in your walk with God, in your prayer life, everything that you put your hands to do. Never be afraid to do anything. You can indeed be strong and courageous and not be afraid, for it is the Lord thy God who is with you. And because he's with you, you have an advantage as Christians, guys. You never have to be afraid to take on anything that God gives you, no matter how big it looks. Because no matter what obstacle comes, you can leap over that wall. No matter what obstacle comes, you can run through that troop. No matter what type of demonic activity comes, you can have the power to tread upon those serpents and scorpions. And you are going to be able to overcome every power of the enemy. When you are walking with God, nothing shall by any means harm you. So you don't have to be afraid. You can be strong and courageous and do all that God is calling you to do. And remember to get rid of that spirit of intimidation. If you are finding yourself in that place and the vision is looking too big for you, get in the word of God because you have to transform your mind. But you're going to renew your mind. Okay, you have to renew your mind by getting in that word of God. So you can be able to no longer see yourself as a grasshopper. No longer be afraid of the high places. No longer be afraid of the terrors that are on the road. No longer be afraid of even the obstacles that are going to come because they are going to come. So just a quick run through of the three main things that we cover to be able to overcome and to crush that spirit of intimidation is first by starting out with your insight. Okay, the way that you see yourself from the inside, not as a grasshopper, but as more than a conqueror. Okay, and then the second thing we need to pay attention to is our perspective. Okay, making sure that we're not afraid of the high places, because when you change your perspective and understand that you're already seated in heavenly places, then nothing will look like a high place to you. Right. So changing your perspective and not being afraid of that high place and not being afraid of even the terrors that are on the road and what people are going to see. OK. And then the third thing that we need to look at is to get ready to execute. When you're getting ready to execute, you need to fortify yourself and prepare yourself for the journey, knowing that things are going to arise. OK, do not lie to yourself or be naive into thinking that just because God gave you the vision, no obstacles are going to come. You need to fortify yourself and prepare yourself to execute the vision. And in executing the vision, be ready to run through what you be ready to leap over walls, be ready to tread upon serpents and scorpions. But do understand that because God is with you, that none of the power of the enemy will be able to harm you. Nothing will by any means harm you. And you will be able to accomplish everything, great exploits in the kingdom of God without hindrance and without delay. So do those three things, guys. Let me just pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Even for those that are watching today that have great visions, that you've given great visions for ministry and business and ideas and things like that. Father, I thank you that this shall be the season where their insight will change, that they'll begin to see themselves as more than conquerors and no longer as grasshoppers. But Father, in the way that you've created them to be and know that because you are with them, that they don't have to be afraid and they can really indeed run through troops and leap over walls and accomplish any great exploit that you have for them to do in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that this shall be the season where the scales shall fall over our eyes and even the visions that we've been putting on hold for a long time because we've been afraid to do them because we don't see the money in our bank accounts. I thank you that as of right now that our perspective is about to change. We'll no longer be afraid of the high places. We'll no longer be afraid of the terrors on the road or what people are going to say about us, but we'll have the power to execute and be ready and fortified to execute. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And Father, Father, I thank you now, even for those that are called into ministry, I pray that you'll, this will be a fresh anointing for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we are under an open heaven, Father, let this be the season where they actually experience the open heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. See you on the other side of prosperity. Patience Dean has had multiple encounters with the supernatural, including a visit to heaven where she saw that all of us have a book. And within each book, are all of the plans for our lives. She saw that most people are not living their books. So many kingdom businesses, books, and inventions are being stagnated by the enemy. In Patience's powerful encounters with God, she found the place where business and the supernatural converges. Now she wants to teach you how to overcome every strategy of the enemy, to launch that business, write that book, or get patent pending on that brilliant idea. Do you feel out of purpose, as if losing the battle against time? Are the promises of God stagnant in your life? Do you feel a tug from God to start a business, 
Stop fighting alone and call Patience Dean Studios now. Let us help you break through to live the abundant life that is already written for you.